Good evening. What's up, Face City? We are pumped. We are excited to do Q&R tonight, 5 p.m. Man, it is a beautiful day outside. Hopefully you had a chance to get out and just check out uh, the goodness of God and his creation. Um, my lips are a little hot because Kristen made some homemade boneless uh, hot, what, what are they, boneless wings? Uh, what do you call them? Buffalo wings. Yes. Cauliflower wings. Cal cauliflower boneless buffalo whatever they were amazing so i've got a little zv to wash it down let me hit that oh god is good god is good anyway we are excited you guys uh to get going here tonight again welcome to q and r uh we first of all i'm pastor andrew if you're not familiar i pastor faith city church right here in fenton michigan and um we're a church that really believes the truth of our goodness in Christ, uh, that God loves us, he cares for us, and he desires nothing more than relationship with us. And so that's that's a key point for us. And so we really like to encourage people uh, in who they are in Christ, and I think that's important. If you want to check out our website, you can go to faithcity.tv. Now, when you go there, click on Michigan Campus. If you'd like to hear what we're all about, we do have both audio and video messages right there easy access. So again, faithcity.tv. When you go there, click on Michigan, it'll scroll down and just hit both uh, either audio or video. We've been uploading the live stream video messages up as well um, as the audio. So uh, any way you can get your hands on the good news, man, I'll tell you, it helps to encourage you, especially in this time. But also we did start uh, a YouTube channel. It is, if you go to youtube.com, Faith City Fenton, F-E-N-T-O-N, uh, then you have the ability there to uh, subscribe and comment and like and all that good stuff. So there's many ways that we launch to you live, um, both YouTube and Facebook at 10 a.m. on Sundays, but also this Q&R is on Facebook. And then what I do is I usually, within a couple of days, will upload that to YouTube as well. So those of you who don't ac have access to Facebook, then you can go ahead and go there. But we have a special guest with us tonight, and I'm really excited to introduce him. So let's just bring in Pastor Jake Stringer. You're live, brother. Hey, Pastor Andy. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome, man. We're so glad you're here, too, man. It's been a while, and uh, this has been kind of a, a crazy situation, hasn't it? It sure has, man. That's an understatement. It's really changed how we've done church, at least for uh, the interim, huh? Yeah, it really has. It really has, and um, I know you all are experiencing the same thing. You're kind of seeing that it's all about the relationships, you know, and uh, the relationships are are sustaining throughout the quarantine. If anything, uh, maybe even getting stronger, which is actually kind of beautiful in a way. Yes, yes. I, I agree with you to some point there, and people really enjoy this connection. Even with this Q&R, this has been something that, you know, I'm not doing this to see my face talk, but people really enjoy this, yeah. and so it, it's been awesome. Um, uh, I apologize, you guys, if there's any issues with the audio here. I mean, hopefully you don't hear it, but we're having a little issue there with some clacking, and that's just my personality, man. I, I stress about that stuff, but uh, if it is, then let's just try to ignore that and just really yeah. get to you know the meat of what's going on here tonight. Amen. Amen. So, Jake, just give us a quick update on Grace Culture right now uh, with, with what's going on in, in your lives and with your family and Michelle and the kids. Well. Uh... You know, uh, just just like you guys and about everybody else, I mean, maybe six weeks ago, we had our last service. Um, and I remember we were actually, I was talking with Michelle this morning about, it feels like years ago, we were going back and forth, do we have service that next Saturday? Because the you, you hadn't been mandated to not be able to assemble yet. Um, and so we were trying to figure out, you know, okay, what's Holy Spirit saying? What's the what's the responsible thing to do, what, what would love do, and we ended up not having service that night, and then, of course, within that next week, everything really changed, um, and she was actually in Colorado visiting her brother with all four of our kids, oh and my so goodness. we were, like, praying that interstate travel wouldn't be stopped before she needed to come home, um, so she got home safe and everything, and that's been three weeks or so now, Okay. and so we've been We've been, uh, you know, doing the doing the virtual thing, staying in contact with Zoom. She's been hosting game nights with the Grace Culture ladies on Zoom. And, oh yeah, uh, it's really fun. Just lots of messaging and video chatting. 
uh, lots of projects getting done at the house. That's awesome, man. I definitely, I definitely saw that game that I thought, what a great idea. Yeah. And that's Michelle's, uh, wheelhouse. I mean, she is obsessed with playing board games. So that was a, that was a huge blast. And I was in the other room listening to how much fun they were having. I was getting a little jealous, you know, but right. they, they had a, they had a blast, man. So, uh, the kids are doing great. Awesome. Uh, you know, they, our kids are small, you know, they're six right. and under. And yeah. Yeah. Four of them, so, so we just, we communicate about, uh, what's going on, you know, uh, according to where they're at, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's cool. Well, it's good to hear that things are going well there. Yeah. And, um, you know, really what we want to talk about is this morning, um, by the way, your message was really good. I, I enjoyed it. I like that you, you choose to bring truth. Uh, you know, it's not always easy, but really what that truth does is it sets us free when we begin to know it and affirm that in our heart as yeah. truth. And so, you know, especially with what we're going through now, there's so many things that could point us to this crazy theology of doom and gloom. And it's right. great when we can lift people up and say, no, this, this isn't the end of all civilization as we know it. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to get to know Father and his heart toward us. Absolutely. You know, but for us up here, we talked about what it means to live resurrected life. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's easy to just celebrate resurrection uh, one time a year. Right. And the truth is we should be celebrating every single day. And one thing I've talked about is that resurrection requires death. It requires death to, you know, uh, really old thought patterns, habits, ideas. And as we do that, we resurrect into this new way of thinking. What is that? It's repentance. And so repentance is just an ongoing process, you know. Um, so I, I believe wholeheartedly in the message of repentance. Jesus preached it. John the Baptist preached it. The disciples preached it. Uh, but I think it's what our idea of repentance is. Exactly. You know, so, so we can easily uh, make it into something that's um, negative, and uh, we can, uh, you know, yell and scream at people and yell repent really loud, or we can say, hey, listen, I want to help you change your mind about both who God is and who you are. Yes. And so that's really the message that I believe you and I carry is, is repentance is essential. Uh, belief right. is extremely important because you never walk in something you don't believe. And so I think that's important for people to understand. Um, but in that vein, you know, what are some, some things that you could uh, maybe speak into this idea of resurrection where we literally, because I, I had talked about this movie. Did, have you seen the movie uh, Just Mercy? I haven't yet. We've been wanting to watch it, and it's on the list, but we haven't. Is that the one with, with Jamie Foxx and yep. Michael Jordan? Okay. Yes, dude, it I is. I haven't watched it yet. It's phenomenal. but. I mean, I, I talked about it today a little bit in my message, and, you know, Kristen and I, we just, we were at a point where we kept saying to our, I mean, out loud, actually, what is wrong with people? I mean, how do people get to this point where they just literally, you know, have such hatred and animosity for another people group or a person? Right. And so, you know, we, we really, uh, we struggled with that. But, you know, something hit me because it was on Resurrection Sunday that we watched the movie. Wow. And it was this, that people just haven't resurrected. They haven't awakened to who they truly are. And right. so this process, I think that's why it's made it easy for me to uh, forgive people and to move through situations because I know they're acting out of false identity. Yes. yes. And so I think, how can I help them discover who they truly are? That's right. key. But what would you say to something like that in that situation, like some ideas or examples, maybe even in your own life, of how you've, you know, seen resurrection in different facets of your life? Well, I mean, it stirs all kinds of stuff um, in my mind, in the, in the scriptures, of course, uh, you know, just obviously directly preceding the resurrection, just like what you're saying, where you said you're, you're beginning to get to a, you're operating at a frequency where you understand people that maybe do operate in retribution and do lack mercy are operating uh, from not understanding who they are. And of course, on the cross, you know, Jesus is, you know, they're committing deicide. And Christ, our Lord, 
you know, they're saying, if you're really the son of God, come up, come off the cross, you know, prove it and, and match our attitude, match our kind of primitive frequency of violence and retribution. And he, and he, he not only doesn't, he doesn't partner with that violent attitude. He actually says, forgive them. And then says exactly what you just said, which is they don't know what they're doing. So I think there is, when you get to know Jesus, there is a point where you begin to see with his eyes in that regard. And you see, and you realize things like people operate from their truth, you know, and so their truth might not be our truth and that doesn't make them bad people. Right. You know, but as your heart expands, it, you know, it's tough to watch people who aren't operating at the same level of love and mercy, but at least we can remember, and that keeps them human. Yeah. You know, I think as soon as we make someone their ideology, they cease to be human. They become an idea, and it's easily, it's much easier to be uh, hateful towards an idea than another human being. Right. So right. what I'm hearing and what you're saying is you, you're keeping everyone human as you do life. So part of living resurrected life is, is not dehumanizing people by making them their views. Uh, you know, and that's not always easy. Uh, you know, it's not always easy. Right. And I think about it, it stirs up all kinds of stuff. You know, when Jesus resurrected, they didn't recognize him. Yeah, that's true. So a lot of times when we're walking in quote, resurrected life, Mm -hmm people that knew you just a short season ago might not recognize you, you know, and, and we can actually expect that. Right. Cause we're growing and stepping into this resurrected life. And I know they always give Thomas a hard time for being doubting <laughs> Thomas, but right. I think part of, part of what was happening is he, Jesus was in a different form. Yeah. So, you know, we can, he was like revelation chapter one says, you know, that he had hair like lightning and a white beard. Oh, that's good. So the last time he saw Jesus, he's he's a lump on the cross, you know, as yeah. Isaiah 52 says, not even recognizable as a human. His visage was marred more than any man. Yeah. And then he's resurrected and he's in a different form. And so I think relationally now a lot, Pastor Andy, and and I think most people spend most of their lives in the relational realm. You're dealing with friends, coworkers, families. Right. And so it's so important, I think, this aspect of resurrected life of realizing everyone, including yourself, operates from your truth and to yeah. keep them human uh, and not partner with, even if it's a hateful truth that they operate from, we have a choice to partner with that or not. Yeah, that's good. Our Lord didn't, you know, and as he is, so are we. <laughs> yeah, you that's know? powerful. And that'll change the world, man. And I think it takes patience, relational patience yeah for sure you know in a different mindset love is patient yep you know take the long view which is always sometimes pretty hard (laughs) it is man and i think you know we even talked about this some time ago on uh, one of my youtube episodes but it's so easy to view someone as a sum total of their beliefs you know yeah we did talk about that yeah yeah. So it's really tough sometimes to separate that. And I think that's probably one of the biggest issues, you know, with the church is if someone doesn't agree with, you know, our theology, um, if somebody's not in the same box as us, then they really struggle uh, with even having a relationship. They feel like I can't even be a friend of this person, you know. Right. And so I think it's something where we need to get past that because not everybody's going to agree on every single thing. But uh, do we believe on the central truth of Jesus, why Jesus came, you know, to introduce us to the Father, to introduce us to, well, we know Father Pater means origin or source. So he wanted to introduce ourselves to ourselves. I usually say, hey, can you wake up to who you truly are? I like that. Um, And that's what the gospel is. It's proclaiming the message of awakening. I mean, even the, even the, Apostles say, awaken to your righteousness or awaken to right relationship. It's already there. There's no magic prayer or words that force it into being. It's already there. But if you don't believe it, if you don't receive it, and I love that word receive in the Greek means to take, right? It's like we don't have to, you know, just pussyfoot around. We can just say, you know what? I grabbed this. This is my relationship with the divine. And so it's just a beautiful story of him showing his love toward us. Uh, I just real quick, I'm looking here. I want to say hi to Mandy. 
Hey, Jean. Hey, Teresa. Good to have you with us. We got Judy and Bianca and uh, Nancy with us. Uh, next door neighbor, Catherine. Uh, she's just amazing, dude. Uh, Becky Siglo. Awesome, awesome. Just going through the list. Jessica, Curtis, Keith. If I didn't mention you, it's not because I have anything personal with you. I just don't see it in the feed. <laughs> um, and I'm not on the feed, so don't. Oh, and Kristen's here, too. She's actually right here. Hi, <laughs> Kristen. She's trying. She's trying to help out here, uh, um, if, you know, so I don't miss anything. Um, that's good, man. I, I think it's good that that we see uh, the truth of of who we are and what resurrection really means. And one thing that I stressed over and over today is, you know, we can't keep it just a one time thing. We celebrate one time a year. You know, yes. it's got to be something that. Life. And, you know, I've also spoken, I know you have too often on, on the soul, you know, the mind, the will, and the emotions, and there, the soul is deep, bro. And yeah. what I love, I don't know, you know, I've heard so much teaching over the last few years, but um, there's just some different people that have, I guess, enlightened me and brought revelation to my life when it comes to the soul. And really seeing that the soul is multifaceted. And there's so many things that we pick up. I talk, I talk about it like being toxins we pick up along the way. And it's not always our fault, right? It's right. the household we were brought up in. I mean, maybe we yes. suffered abuse. Maybe we've heard misinformation or, or, or lies and false things. And so right. we pick those up and we take those into our soul. And sometimes they bury so deep, we don't even know they're there. And so then we ask questions like, why am I responding like this? You know? Uh, why, why is my first response to a person when they ask this question, why is it this way? And a lot of times when we dig down, uh, and I know not everyone's into that, but I think it's important. Right. I, I believe that Jesus is the healer, and that includes our mind, will, and emotions. Yes. And, and so the thing that I love about, about God is that he's described as both love, oh, that's good, right? But also light. And what does light do? It exposes yeah. things for how they really are. Yes. But the beauty of it, because I used to think, oh, God's light, he's this bright light. And man, when he exposes me, all right. hell's going to break loose, right? Oh, and, and, and so yeah. you get yep. scared. Yep. But what, what I found is that light will expose things, but why God, who is light, exposes things is so then we can, we can be aware of what's there and what's hurting us. But then right. what happens is Jesus steps in as the healer and says... Can yeah. I heal that area in your right. soul? I didn't, ex I didn't expose you to bring shame. I expose this in your life because I want to bring you healing and restoration. And, and so, go ahead. Well, speaking of, you know, you, you mentioned why do I react this way when a certain word comes or a cert I receive certain input and it causes this reaction, you know, and sometimes that's in a cycle. You know, I think... A lot of us, if we grew up under a shame-based message mm. or a fear-based message, yep. using the phrase that you did that Jesus wants to shine light on wounds in your soul, for instance, that's going to cause, that's going to trigger someone who was raised under shame. And it, you know, if their whole understanding of God was framed around shame, when you say you want to shine light on their dark places— you know, it causes those people to clinch and close off. And that's why I think it's so important, you know, Romans 2, 4, it's the goodness of God that leads men to mind shifting, you know, mind changing repentance. Come on. So that's why I think grace and the goodness of God is such an important foundation because grace takes those of us that maybe grew up under a fear or shame based message and gets us to a place of trusting the Father again, because you're not going to get close to someone you don't trust. You're certainly not going to let them shine light on your dark places if there's not an intimate level of trust there. Right. Um, and so when people say they come to Faith City for six months or a year and they finally receive, you know what? I really do believe God is only good. They, you get to a place where you trust God, and what, what we found at Grace Culture is when people get to that place of trusting God, Jesus actually does go to work wanting to heal their soul. That's good, man. 
and I think I think he always did, but but he's not going to force himself on people, and they didn't trust him, you know. And when they finally receive the Father is a safe place, then yeah. then Jesus begins to invite them to maybe address some of those wounds. And I think it's important, especially us men. I think this happens a lot. There's a perception that that is like weakness if we were wounded, or that if we had traumas in our in our mind, will, and emotions. Yeah. And I, and I really am passionate about the message that that's not weakness. If you could become a better husband or dad because your mind and your heart are more healed, wouldn't you want to? Um, you know, and I think most men would say, yes, they would. And it actually takes bravery from a man to allow Jesus, uh, you know, to, to heal the, as he said, you know, Luke chapter 418, I'm here to heal the bruised of heart, it says in the Greek. So um, to allow him to do that, you know, and, and I think, you know, I grew up a, what, what you would call man-made religion, and there, there were a lot of wounds inflicted there, you know, I, right. God, I was very afraid of God, very insecure about my salvation, Yeah, uh, I was up at the altar two or three weeks a month to make sure I was saved, <laughs> right. you know, and so it, it took a lot of teaching about the goodness of God, Yeah, you know, yeah. for me to finally step into believing that. You know, but that that did get me to trust right. the father again. And, and I share about my stepdad a lot. I didn't know if he was going to whip me with a belt or hug me. Uh, and so I, I could never trust a guy like that to heal my mind. Yeah, that's tough, um, man. You know, and so if we see the father like that, I think a lot of wounds go unhealed and a lot of traumas. And uh, and that's not weakness at all, Who, yeah. whoever you are. It actually takes much bravery to trust God enough. Yeah, uh, that's to shine good. light, and light means understanding in the Greek too. Sometimes the darkness is 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 not understanding something about yes. yourself or His character. And yep. I, think about yourself when you receive that God was good, when yeah. He shone light into your mind and your heart about that, and then whoop, that changes your whole life. It does, man. You know, and gener and your children's lives because you end up parenting differently or being a different type of husband. You know, so this is all resurrection life you know and it, it is awakening and I, I like what you said about you know so we're here talking about this stuff so so people can awaken to it yeah it is there it's present uh, but without awakening and then believing it we don't walk in it yeah that's true man you know that's good brother i i'm glad can you hear me right now yeah i can can you hear me right now as i'm talking nope okay i was just trying to clean up the audio a little bit no, that's okay. good, man. I, um, I'll tell you, for me, even in my personal life, I mean, that's some stuff I, I had to get over. And I, I, man, one thing that Grace did for me, because wouldn't you agree, it's definitely a journey. And I, I think you and I have talked about yeah. uh, how sometimes that pendulum, when it, when it swings, it goes way to the other side. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I found myself almost becoming a Grace Pharisee you know, pointing my finger at those who didn't agree with, you know, this grace thing that I was learning. Right. But what happened is kingdom, grace was, I, I think it's Bishop Jamie, who, by the way, will be on next week. We've got a great, uh, you know, uh, line up. A set of people, good lineup. Thank you. Um, but, you know, grace is really the doorway. And so that brought me into a whole new way of thinking the thought pattern of the kingdom that Jesus really exposes us to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. In fact, it's within you, right? Yeah. And so kingdom is this whole new way of, of seeing, believing, doing. I talk about that. I talked about that this morning that, you know, we're not human doings. We're hu human beings. Yeah. So we're yeah. finding out the way to Thank be you, yeah. in this yeah. world, you know? Yeah. Um, but for me, that was quite a process of having to not throw the baby out with the bathwater, to use the foundational um, theology and I ideology um, that I learned all through my life and, you know, keep what's necessary, keep what is extremely important and foundational. Yeah. Uh, but also as I grow, if there's others who don't agree with me, uh, not separating from them, right. not calling them out. I mean, it's one thing to privately talk to a brother about something you've seen in his life, yeah. but calling them out in front of other people to embarrass them, that just doesn't seem like the way of love to me. You yeah, know? Love, love doesn't control, and that, that's actually an act of control. Mm. 
you know, yeah. when people do that, they're trying to control the own, the, their own narrative, you know, and they're trying to control someone else's journey, uh, you know, and, and so that the, the fruit, like you said, you became a grace Pharisee. I, I like to constantly monitor the fruit in my life, not to see if I'm saved or unsaved or righteous or unrighteous like I used to. Um, <laughs> but, but just to see, uh, you know, the journey I'm on, what sort of fruit is it bearing? Am I growing in love? And I, am I becoming more patient? And Michelle and I talk a lot about how uh, retroactive patience seems to come much easier than than uh, like patience forward. Meaning like you're talking about this journey and grace is the doorway and then kingdom and then these other things that you end up studying out. When I see people say, for instance, if they come at me or they or they call me out, such a patience comes out of me now. And I don't say that base boastfully, but it's because I was in that exact same spot. And I know because I used to do the same things. And so nothing but love. I mean, in, in the last couple of years, I've seen that aggression really towards that has totally left me. Yeah. You know, and uh, and I praise Jesus for that. And it's one of those things that makes me think, man, praise God. I'm really following Jesus. You know, because yeah. following him, it's like on Facebook, sometimes you have to unfollow people. You have to click the unfollow button. So some of these doctrines, imagine they had a Facebook page. Oh, my gosh. You, know, you have to go and unfollow it. It's the toxic <laughs> stuff in your soul, like you said. Yeah. Uh, you got to flush it out. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you don't love people that still have those toxins in their system. You do, uh, if anything, more than ever. Yes. But you're also thankful that that Holy Spirit and Jesus have have flushed that out. And yeah. you know, a friend of mine, Eric Reeder, he does this really cool thing. You mentioned the kingdom, where he replaces the word kingdom with the words Father's heart. Mm. So, for instance, when when Jesus said, "Repent, for the kingdom is at hand," imagine he said, "Hey, change your thinking. The Father's heart is here." Come on! <laughs> wow. That's powerful, and, you know, bro. So that brings, and I get chills just sharing that because you see, and then you go through the the scriptures, you know, and you, and it's just, uh, it brings it into a family, father, child dynamic, which is really the Abba revelation. Yeah. It's Pater. It's Jesus brought the revelation of a father. Yes. Uh, you know, so we are a family, and families are often dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you know? true. So, that's true. Uh, fam- I mean, all families. of us, right? Quarantine yeah. to show you that. <laughs> 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 all of us, man, there's, there's no one unscathed from that. But, you know, I find even myself like, you know, we're just human beings with emotions and, and issues. And it's like, you know, sometimes you, <laughs> you just have to say, I'm going to go for a walk in the, or maybe they just say, dad, can you go for a walk out in the backyard? Because I don't know what's going on with you, you know, but, right. but that's good, man. And, yeah. and I, I think uh, the most important thing about the kingdom is that we do accept people where they are. I think for me, that was one of the biggest things is certain people groups, political groups. Um, I used to, I used to look at people with labels. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I even read this morning, the apostle Paul says, we no longer judge anyone or see anyone according to the flesh. And man, that is like, that's kingdom right there because it's so easy to get caught up into what this person says and believes and their political side. And yep. kingdom has brought me to a place where I've just, I've just let that go. Um, I see right. people as yeah. human beings. I see, I see every individual as son, a son or daughter of God. Uh, right. Some just don't know it yet. They don't know. Um, because either, either Christ and his sacrifice was more powerful than the first Adam or it wasn't. And so, right. you know, if God in the form of Jesus is accepting everyone where they were, I mean, the only time I saw Jesus really get hacked off and, and go off anyone was the religious people who were keeping others away. Right. Those who yeah. were bringing discord and dissension and those who were saying, you're in and you're out. It's yeah. us and you're them. Right. That's the only time that Jesus went up. I mean, either we follow Jesus right. or we can choose to follow someone else in Scripture. Yes. I'm going to choose Jesus every yep. time. And what I yeah, found that's... is that, what's that? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I just say, what I found in my life is that has brought, man, Jake, it has brought such peace. I mean, I, 
I don't stress, bro. I mean, sure, I stress about certain things in life and my family and, you know, come on, finances. I mean, all those things we can. But, but as far as my relationship with God, there's no stress. Come on. I, I, there's no fear. Right. Uh, there's no worry. There's no anxiety. I don't wonder if God's okay with me today or if he was, you know, later tomorrow. I, there's just no issue with that. I know that God is good with me. And so right. usually if I'm having an issue, I know it's me not understanding his goodness and his kindness. That's what draws me to change my mind. But I've come to a point where I don't stress about this God thing. I don't lay in bed at night wondering if I'm okay. What if he came back tonight? That'd be awesome if he did, right? Like now that's yeah. where I am. It's like, let's yeah. party. Let's usher right. him into this brand new world and let's fully manifest kingdom now. Come on. Yeah. Right. But, uh, you know, there's really, and as far as people groups, I'll sit down with anyone and have a conversation, drink a coffee, uh, have a meal. I mean, Jesus did. I think the least that I can do is follow my master and do the same thing, you know? The kingdom is relational, yeah. and religion is tribal, but the kingdom transcends tribalism. Come on. So when you, when you start stepping into the kingdom, what you're describing is a transcendence of tribalism which says us and them. And the thing about most people, when I was in tribalism, I didn't know I was in tribalism. Right. You know, so what happens is when you're a tribe, you're at war often. And, and you're actually, you start being at war with different people groups, different political affiliations, different ideologies, different denominations. You're actually kind of warring all the time and you can't get out. And the, the father's heart or the, the kingdom, uh, I'm not saying those are exact synonyms, but the kingdom revelation does actually pull you out of that tribalism. We see it, we see it through the Old Testament, you know, all the different tribes and, you know, and God wants to wipe out this tribe, but preserve our tribe. At least that's what they thought about it. You know, that, that was their understanding. And this morning on my life, you know, I just talked about how agape love actually rejoices in the inclusion of others, you know, and is passionate about that people don't get left behind. Come on, that's good. You know, but tribalism says as long as my tribe is okay, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's what you're describing, you know, the us and them. And to take it back to the resurrection, you know, after the resurrection, when, when uh, you know, it says in John chapter 20, I love it because it says for fear of the Jews, they were assembled in a secret room. <laughs> So, you know, for, for fear of the religious people, they had to be hiding. And the first thing Jesus says is, peace be unto you. Come on. So a resurrected life, that word in the Greek means oneness. Mm. Know us and them. Yeah. So he literally, he says, know us and them be unto you. And then he says, and again, I say unto you, oneness unto you. And he doesn't remind them of what they did wrong. You know, like you said, in your relationship, you're not thinking, is God okay with me or not? Right. That doesn't mean you're spiritually reckless. I think sometimes people misunderstand that. Yes. That actually means you're maturing as a son or right. a daughter. You know, my, my son, Harmon, he's six. His name means wielder of the lance of righteousness, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so I, I picture him with a, a lance of love, you know. That's that I good. I believe love is the lance of, of righteousness. And he's not wondering where he stands with me. I would be grieved as a father if my son was wondering where he stood with me. Uh, and I believe in our Heavenly Father is the same way. He w actually wants us to get to that place where you're thankfully already at. Uh, then you can really grow. I think you're trapped. As long as you're wondering if you're stuck in that behavioral way of relating to God only, right? you, you actually really struggle to grow. Yeah. That you actually need a grace, a revelation of, quote, grace, you know, that where you stand with God is because of his effort. Yeah. Uh, not your your effort. Yeah, that's, uh, that's and, good, man. And you can begin to grow, which makes sense because you said it's the gateway. Right. That's what that's what led to the growth. So for sure. And, and I like that you brought I like that you brought that point up because I was going to say that, that, you know. It hasn't caused me to go off the rails in, right. into sin. It actually Absolutely. has caused the opposite. Amen. Um, being, being sun conscious 
versus sin conscious, does it drive you to more sin? Awesome. It, it brings you to a level of maturity where, I mean, I, I love, I've said this before, but my, you know, one of my best buddies, Peter Heiss, you know, he says that the grass looks greener on the other side, but it's because it's AstroTurf. <laughs> it's fake. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't that good? That and, so good? And so what happens is I think as you mature, you look at that thing, and you're like, uh, first of all, it's a deception that I'm going to find fulfillment in that. Secondly, I'm not built for that. See, this whole idea of God's grace and love and goodness and awakening to our right relationship, it doesn't drive you into, you know, the worst of worst. It actually keeps you from that. It's like love is the buffer. Now, again, when I mess up, I've said this before, that anytime we do the, the verb sinning, it's when we're yeah. not walking in love. We're choosing another route or another road other than love, yeah. you know? Absolutely. But I talked yeah. to today about the word hamartia, which comes from, uh, you know, two roots. It's ha, H-A dash, which is, it's a, um, a prefix, which makes something negative. Like the word like, you can make dislike, the opposite with dis in front of it. But okay. then it comes from that word hamartia, which is from the root word miros. And it actually means your, your um, origin or, or who you truly are. So sin is whenever we operate completely out of our chosen identity of who we are. You that know, and, and, that, and, and, that brings it into an identity context mm -hmm. and not just a behavioral context. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. That yeah, your behavior is going to flow from the identity you believe you have. Yes. Yep. And so a lot of times, and I think I said this today that, you know, we make sin into a verb, but it's really a noun. Yeah. You know, right. so, so again, whenever we negate the truth of who we are, that's sin. And, um, you know, for all I've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, you and I both know this, and I touched on right. this today, that word glory is the word doxa in the Greek, yes. which means to have a good opinion of. Opinion, yeah. So whenever we don't realize or awaken to the good opinion God has of, has of us, then we operate out of false identity. It Come happens on, every man. single time, man. It's so right. powerful, isn't it? So, you know, you know, a lot of people will say that, you know, well, if, if you keep preaching grace and love, people are going to sin more and more. I find it the opposite. Yeah. I the find opposite. what happens is people awaken to their identity and they actually sin less and less versus right. where I used to be when I was more legalistic and trying by my own willpower. I would sin yeah. more but I would hide it. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, yeah. but grace lets me be transparent and open. Bring and, it out and, into the open and let the light shine because we know for the Father's a safe place. Yeah, yeah, isn't it good? And then what, what, is, what do the scriptures tell us? The, the apostles tell us that uh, to be to confess your faults to one another so healing may come. I love that scripture. I think healing comes in those transparent areas, you know. And not that we just tell everyone all our stuff. You got to find people that you can trust right. and you can confide in, you know. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. I got. I think we have a question here from okay. Mandy. She says, any advice for those of us who are at that point of relationship, but now very worried about those who aren't there yet? So I'm wondering if she's referring to a point in their relationship where they are understanding God's love and care for them. Uh, versus those who don't. What would you even say there? Start with you on that, to Mandy. Again, any advice for those of us who are at that point of relationship where we understand, you know, God's goodness, we understand, begin to understand our identity, uh, but are you worried about those who aren't there yet? What would you say to that? Um, well, I'm not sure I totally understand the question, um, but I, I think she means, you know, if people in your life are not walking in the same revelation that that you are of of the love and goodness of father right and i can only speak practically from uh my wife michelle and i's experience is at this point in 2020 after 11 years of of kind of being in this thing and growing and so many relationships and uh we used to really try to drag people at our pace we really did. And I think on some level, we thought our success or failure as a friend or minister was rooted in whether or not we were able to bring them to where we were. Um, and then Holy Spirit had to show us over time that our success as a friend is, 
or a family member, minister, I could be totally misunderstanding her question, is not rooted in if I get them to, to come over to where I'm at or walk at my pace or get the same revelation I have. And we have just chosen to take an unbelievably long view with about 95% of people. And there are four or five percent of people in our life that really, uh, I would say, are our inner circle where we're all kind of not that you all your closest friends always have to be who you exactly think like. Right. But our inner circle generally is is people who are kind of on the same frequency as we are with God and stuff. Um, but I still have tons of, you know, probably hundreds yeah. of people in the medium circle. Yeah, for where sure. They're at totally varying points so i'm oh, not yeah. sure how, how close this person is um you know but i know it can be frustrating i know it can be yeah. very frustrating because and, and, you know how good it could be for them yes and pastor and Kristen have... just asked her if that's what she meant by the question um okay. but you know i will say that um understanding his love and this grace it's taken me out of crisis evangelism mode <laughs> like I got to get a bunch of people saved or else. Yeah. Especially when I woke up to the fact that I don't save people anyway. <laughs> right. He's yeah. the savior. I'm not. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm a, sorry. I'm equipped with the message and the gospel. Right. Sorry, bro. I'm learning all this new technology and stuff in my way. <laughs> it's okay, man. It's Just okay. give me a pulpit and freedom. <laughs> no, the, no. The quarantine, it breeds innovation. It does. <laughs> But, you know, I think it's taken me for sure out of that crisis mode and that, oh, my gosh, you know, every single person's got to know. And it's also helped me to, although I really want people to have an understanding of their sonship, I guess it's, I guess the only word I can come up with is taking me out of the crisis mode on it. Yeah, I can just no, love them where they are and, and realize that I'm not going to change their mind, possibly. It's going to be a spirit thing, right? Right. And she did use the word worry, you know, so I could see how we're thinking, you know, about salvation and things like that. Yeah, she but, says, she says, I want them to feel the goodness of comfort and guidance that I receive now, you know. Yes. So I think, I think what it is, and, and Mandy is such a, such a sweet sister. I mean, I mean, she's come up to both, you know, Pastor Kristen and I on several occasions and said, this has just radically changed my life, understanding. Wow who I am, whose I am, because that's really the thrust of our ministry is who you are and whose you are. Yes. If you can get those two things right, come on, man. I mean, everything just falls in line, you know, and then you discover your purpose. You, you right. discover, you know, once you discover your goodness, you're like, man, I got purpose. If nothing else right now, yes. I can just love the heck out of people. I can yes. start there, right? Even if they yeah. don't agree with me. <laughs> and, they, I don't, yeah. and I don't have to get people to come to my side of the aisle immediately. I can just love them from afar. And then slowly those relationships open up. So it's just a beautiful point, you know? Well, the, if I could say one more thing, sure. if, when, especially when we have a legalistic background, one of the things that gets ingrained in us is, is actually a need to see short-term external results. Hmm. Because that's what the law was. You know, you, you preach behavior modification and hmm. you were a success if people modified their behavior. And I think as we transition into an understanding of, of a, a good father and a less legalistic understanding, one of the things that lingers into the transition that we're not aware of is that we still kind of want to see really short-term, observable, external results. Uh, and those those don't always come. The, the kingdom transition is, is really a journey, you know? And... Uh, you know, just to be patient and take the long view and be conversational. Like you said, just love them. And then if that, and you it, love them without trying to change them or force them, because love's not forceful. And you never know six months or a year from now, that perfect moment for the conversation where they yeah. ask you about it. Yeah. And, yeah. And which means you know they're open. And that's key right there, man. Yeah. I mean, that that is key right there when and you realize that, if you're loving people and you're not making them into a mission or another salvation notch in your belt, right? When you actually truly care, uh, you know, what I found in my relationships, even with people who uh, used to be atheists and aren't anymore, right? 
Yeah. Um, they may not even be going to church, but they've said with their own mouth, you know, I went from atheist to agnostic, and now I'm kind of wondering more about this stuff, just hanging out with you. But it's because I just accepted them. I asked. Yeah. I think sometimes we make it so spiritual, you right. know, and, instead of just saying, hey, man, what's going on in your life? Oh, wow, you're into that? Let's talk about that, right? And, right. and I've yeah. had to learn that, um, not talking about myself <laughs> as much as I can. Uh, we're all a little like, narcissistic to a certain uh, degree, right? Um, but but just really caring about someone else and what's going on in their life. What are their cares, worries, and loves? And when you start to uh, care for those things, then they're like, oh, wow, they actually care about me and want relationship because of me. And it's in those moments um, that I think those questions begin to formulate in their mind and eventually come to their lips where they're like, I, 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 what's going on, man? Why are you different? What what is it about you? What's up with this God thing that you say you're into, you know? So it's it makes like, it beautiful. It, only, only when we love without agenda do people become curious about the love we walk in. Mm. Mm. If, if, they, if people are sensing an agenda. Come on. Uh, you know, so it, it is that, ask the atheist, what are you into? With, and then when he says something, don't be like, well, that's funny because 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 16 <laughs> says... Uh, no, seriously. because he's like, I don't care about the Bible. Doesn't you know, care about the Bible, <laughs> dude. That's that is not a that's a wild one. You just kind of brought that up. That there was a point in my life where I thought that I just have to have a scripture and verse for everything I talk about. But I mean, think about it. Other than certain moments where the apostles were pulling from the Old Testament Jewish scriptures, um, sometimes it was just getting to know people and sitting at a table and and getting into their life. Jesus did the same thing. He had. Moments where he was preaching before a group or multitude, right. but when he was there one on one with people, he wasn't pulling out scripture and verses all the time. He was right. saying, "Hey, can I come to your house? I just want to sit with you." Right. And then all of a sudden, they're radically changed, and he says things like, "Salvation has come to this house today, Zacchaeus." You're like, "What just happened?" I got chills on that one. Yeah. Come on, man. It's powerful. Well, listen, man. Um, yeah. Not a whole lot of questions, but I think it's because you and I just been yakking back and forth, and it's it's been good. And uh, oh, my my pastor buddy uh, Javier's here with us. Hey Javier, how's it going, brother? Uh, great to have you tune in. Um, but what I want to do is, it's great having you on as a guest. And uh, like I said, we've got a great lineup coming up here. But I have basically uh, five questions that I put together. Okay. Okay. And I want to ask these five questions, the same five questions every episode, and just kind of get the feedback uh, from uh, each person that's a guest. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we can uh, bring this thing to a close. Sound good? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So number one, what is your absolute... Now, now listen to me. This is the most spiritual of all the questions, okay? Okay, yeah. What is your absolute favorite food? Hmm. That, that's easy. Pizza. Pizza. Yeah. It should be what food makes you speak in tongues the loudest. So ah. it's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of the like the white pizzas with the like ricotta and, uh, you know, the three feta, you know, that that type of deal with where it's cooked enough where the there's brown spots a little bit. Well done. You Come know, on now. On the cheese. <laughs> For those of you who have not eaten, you are really hungry now. <laughs> That's I awesome. And start laughing in the back. <laughs> That's awesome. He's, okay, pizza. He's actually Googling right now, you know, pizza near me, so we don't have to talk about There you that. go. Here's another go-to, man. Okay, this is, this, is, uh, this is good, and just have freedom here, brother, okay? Okay. Number two, if you were stranded on a deserted island and could only have one album to play, oh, what man. would it be? Wow. One album, brother, on a deserted island. Um, it might be Soundgarden, Super Unknown. Oh, That's come on. That's probably the most uh, life-changing album I ever heard. I still listen to it, and I call it an album of unskippable songs. Come and, on, uh, Jesus Christ pose. No, that's lyrics. bad, Motorfinger. Which I love one? The music. I love Chris Cornell's voice. Oh, yeah. I, I'm still not tired of it. It came out in 1994. It's 26 years later, and I still listen to it, and it sounds timeless and sounds new. And Which album by Soundgarden is it? Super unknown. Okay. Yep. I, I just quoted uh, uh, a song from uh, Bad Motorfinger. That's probably one of my faves oh. that they came out with. Yeah, I love that album too. That's awesome. Okay, you ready for number three? Yeah. All right. 
Number three, what is your all-time favorite movie? Uh, what is your all-time favorite movie? It's hard movie? not to break it into categories, you know, comedy, drama. Um, probably, uh, probably Forrest Gump or Shawshank Redemption. Ah, yes. Forrest Gump, you, you alluded to that today, didn't you? I can I can go word for word, man, on the, on that one. I love it. It's a powerful movie. That's awesome, man. Yeah, those are both really good movies. All right, so let's see. Number four. We got two more left. You ready? Okay, number four. So. <laughs> so number four is, why did you get into ministry, and how long have you been doing it? Um. Well, in second year of Bible college in 2011, uh, we had an assignment to teach a 10 minute. At, it was called a salvation message. Okay. And we, we picked our audience, and I picked an audience of prison inmates and basically taught for the first time in 2011 a 10 minute message. And when I got home that afternoon, I just, like you said, grace leads to discovering your purpose. Yeah. And I realized that afternoon, oh my gosh, I think this is part of my purpose. Mm. And uh, and then I took that purpose and packaged it into the wineskin I was familiar with, which is to start a church. <laughs> uh. So so then in 2015, uh, my my wife and I and and her parents, we started Grace Culture here in March of 2015. Okay, um, and so that. So I've been in ministry, I would say, about nine years now, but we've, we've had a church for six. Wow. But I was ministering before that. Okay. Probably since 2012 is when I started to preach places and minister and pray for people, that type of stuff. That's cool, man. That's awesome. And you're sticking with it. So that really brings us to the fifth and final question. And I think this is probably the most important question of all. Although your favorite food and album is, or are, uh, number five. What is the most powerful revelation to you personally that has changed your view of God and how you do ministry? Again, what is the most powerful revelation to you personally that has changed your view of God and how you do ministry? Um, there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, you know, and uh, I would say the most powerful revelation that has changed the way I do ministry, and we're talking about how I do ministry in 2020, is the revelation that uh, the mystery revealed is Christ in you, not the mystery made possible after you pray. Okay. So, so now when I look at people, I see them as sons and daughters who just may not be aware yet, rather than a a ministry like notch on my belt. Okay. Uh, you know, and it's freed me to love without an agenda. Uh, you know, and it changes basically it's shaped my message to basically completely being trying to convey people their true origin and identity. That's good, man. Um, and that, you know, that's probably cause I think that brings the most healing, the revelation of union can bring the most deep healing to a person's heart. I think of really of anything, if they can really accept that. And I know re religion divides and is based on separation. And I really think the kingdom is about the gospel of peace, which, you know, Paul said, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, Yeah, which means oneness or to be set as one again. That's so, good, man. Uh, so that that's, and, and I know maybe not everybody agrees with that doctrinally and that's okay, but that's been the most powerful thing for me. Okay. That's awesome, man. No, I mean, you just got to be open and honest. And listen, man, we've had moments in, um, you know, even our relationship of, uh, has been two, two and a half years now. And where we haven't always agreed on every single thing, but that's what I love yeah. about you is we're both on different parts of the journey. We're both, yeah. I like what one guy said, stay in your lane. So, yeah. you know, you just stay in the lane that God's given you, and I think we're good. So even though we might not might not agree on every single thing um, right. doctrinally, man, I love you, bro. You're awesome. Love you, love you too, man. Well, listen, love I know you need to get going. So just two things. Um, just want to encourage you, you know, let's uh, just keep keep keeping on and doing what you're doing. Um, if anyone would like to uh, give to the ministry, 
uh, Grace Culture. It'd be awesome. You can just go to graceculture.net slash give. I encourage you. If you've got some extra, and I know it's tough, it's hard times, but go ahead and bless them. And even more importantly than that is, if you want to bless them personally, uh, you can go right to PayPal, mstringer00 at gmail.com. And uh, it'd be so awesome if if uh, Jake or Michelle were to open up their PayPal and get a notification that someone blessed them. Amen. Wow. So you don't, have, you don't have to do that, man. Thank you very much. That's no, very we don't fun. have to. We get to. <laughs> Yeah. So it's been awesome having you, man. I, I appreciate this hour of your time. I, I know it's not easy being a father and a husband and all that good stuff, but uh, I love you, bro, and we'll talk soon, man. Well, thank you for your pro professionalism messaging weeks ago and planning it. You know, so that's just uh, you really operate at a level of excellence all the time. And well, thanks, that man. wasn't lost on me. I noticed you messaged me a month ago, started asking about it. So because you know life as a dad <laughs> very well yourself. Yes. And oh yeah husband, so. yeah it's thanks man hey love you brother talk soon man all right, all right. Too. Bye, bye bye there you have it folks pastor jake stringer that was awesome wasn't it well i encourage you guys you know just uh keep on keeping on and i know that things aren't always easy especially through this process and and what we're going through but know that we're here for you and we do these q and r's and and we bring special guests uh to you because we just want you to be encouraged uh with that i just want to remind you that next week we have bishop jamie Engelhart. he will be with us and if you've never heard jamie Engelhart, wow that's all i can say say it backwards wow say it upside down mom if my dad's watching, he remembers that joke because he's the one that came up with it. <laughs> but we have Bishop Jamie Engelhart next week, and um, there's just some really awesome revelation there. So bring your questions, especially theological questions, you know, anything you can think of. Did Adam have a navel? You know, really, really deep, important things like that. But seriously, uh, bring your questions next week. Um, in fact, if you want to, go ahead and go to our uh, Faith City uh, um, Facebook, and I would IM us. Send an instant message ahead of time throughout the week of any questions you may have. Um, I think it's just really important that we get those up front because I'd like to have more questions if we possibly can. Uh, but with that, we just want to pray for you guys. Um, we had one prayer request come in for great uncle Bob, a good friend of mine. Uh, he was diagnosed with, uh, COVID my buddy, Jason, his uncle was, uh, diagnosed with COVID in, in his eighties. Um, but let me just pray for you overall. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time together. It's just awesome that we can be together. We can just rally around scripture and relationship and just discovering who you are, what you're about, realizing that you love us right where we are, right here and right now. We just bring Great Uncle Bob to you and anyone else who's dealing with sickness in their bodies. We thank you for healing and wholeness right now. We receive that in Jesus' name. I pray that you're healing people even in their minds, their will, and their emotions right now, that they're receiving your peace that surpasses all natural human understanding. Just continue to give us wisdom and guidance through this time. We thank you for this technology and ability to get together and encourage one another. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move on people's hearts this week, whether they're at home or work or abroad, to be that light to be that salt, be love, grace, and goodness to those around them. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. We love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Meet us back here, both Facebook and YouTube Live next week, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. We'll have a couple more worship songs, right, baby? Yeah, she says yeah. So that's that's a that's a good one there, and uh, and then another message. I don't know if I'm going to continue in resurrection or what we're going to do, but whatever it is, God's good, and you will be encouraged. So meet us back here next week, 10 a.m., and then we will have Q and R with Bishop Jamie Engelhart. Love you guys. See you soon. <laughs>